वेलकम ऑल ऑफ यू इन दिस ट्यूटोरियल ऑफ टाइम सीरीज प्रेडिक्शन एंड फोरकास्टिंग यूजिंग ऑटो रिग्रेशन मॉडल ऑटो रिग्रेशन मॉडल बेसिकली इट इज अ लिनियर रिग्रेशन मॉडल इन विच इंडिपेंडेंट आर इंडिपेंडेंट वेरिएबल्स आर नथिंग बट द प्रीवियस टाइम स्टेप्स एंड अवर डिपेंडेंट वेरिएबल इज अवर करंट टाइम स्टेप्स सो लेट सी हॉट इज हाउ ऑटो रिग्रेशन मॉडल इज अप्लाइड इन टाइम सीरीज सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वी इम्पोर्ट ऑल बेसिक लाइब्रेरीज After that, we are going to import our data set. That is nothing but air passenger data set. Here we can see our data set. Our data set consists of two columns, month and passenger. Here we have monthly data of passengers, monthly count of passengers. Our data set contains 144 rows and only two columns. That is month and passenger. Let's see the graphical visualization of our data. Here we can see. This is our graphical visual visualization of our data, our time series data. As in above graph, we can see that our time series having increasing trend. That is our time series is non-stationary. Because if when we say our time series is stationary, when it having constant mean and variance, and there is no any trend. But in our time series data, we have increasing trend. That's why we can say that our time series is non-stationary. It does not have constant mean and variance. it also having increasing trend that's why our data is non stationary there is one test for checking stationarity of our time series data that is adf test augmented dicke fuller test the null hypothesis of adf test is that the time series is non stationary so if p value of the test is less than the significance level that is alpha if p value is less than 0.05 then you reject the null hypothesis and you accept the alternative hypothesis that is alternative hypothesis is that our time series is stationary here is one function of augmented dicke fuller test after using that function we uh, get values of augmented dicke fuller test statistics as well as p value lag number of lags used and number of observations if result one that is uh, p value is less than 0.05 then time series is stationary and p value is greater than 0.05 then time series is non stationary this function gives us this values of these four labels as well as it gives us a result of time series is stationary or not so let's execute our function after that we are going to see augmented dicke fuller test on our passenger data here we can see our adf test statistics is 0.81 p value is 0.99 lags used are 13 number of observations are used are 130 and the result is time series is non stationary the necessary condition of any time series model or is that our data our time series data should be stationary so our data is actually non stationary that's why we have to convert our non stationary data into a stationary data for that we use differencing method the differencing is nothing but we try to subtract previous observation from the current observation so let's apply first difference on our data our uh, passenger data for that we use passenger dot d i e w f uh, command this function so we can see here here one next column is first difference one uh, added column is first difference consist of first value is not applicable after that we can see 118 minus 112 then answer is 6 and uh, 132 minus 118 the answer is 14 so we can see the current value is subtracted from the previous value and this is our first difference if uh, and after uh, that we are going to see is it our time series will be stationary or it is made stationary or not so first of all we fill this not applicable value to 0 this is our new data after filling the not applicable value as a zero we try to see is it our time series is stationary become stationary or not we try to apply augmented dicke fuller test on this first difference so let's see is it our time series will be stationary or not so after applying the adf test on first difference we can see the time series is stationary because the p value is less than 0.05 so up when uh, you didn't get any uh, Uh, stationarity after the first difference you have to go for the second difference but here we can see our uh, first difference gives us a stationary data so let's plot our first differencing data let's see the plot of our new data that is first difference data here we can see 
uh, here is somehow weak stationarity but uh, when we um, uh, take the second difference there 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 may be a uh, over differencing so that's why as our adf test gives as a result of time series is stationary then we use only first difference so this is the graphical visualization of first difference the basic uh, basically the uh, in time series or auto regressive model we use uh, partial auto correlation function that is partial auto correlation function plot the next step is to identify if the model needs any ar terms that is auto regressive terms that is number of likes how many number of likes or how many previous observations are used to predict the current observation that is nothing but ar terms it is called as a ar terms you find out the required number of ar terms by inspecting the partial auto correlation plot partial auto correlation plot can be imagined as correlation between the series of and its likes that is nothing but correlation between the current value and its likes so let's execute this code and try to see our uh, partial auto correlation plot uh, here we go here we get two plots here is one year due to one error of displaying of display of jupiter notebook so for remove that error you just here uh, give one semicolon so after that uh, you can see here uh, there is only one graph here we can see the uh, auto partial auto correlation between first value and second value is high than that of third so first uh, so we here only use the first lag that is nothing but this because the correlation between the first lag and the current value is higher after that the uh, uh, we can see here a graph changes into negative domain the negative part that's why there is a not any much correlation between second and third that's why we use only first lag we uh, only use first lag for our auto correlation or auto regressive model so what is auto regressive model auto regressive model is one where yt depends on its own likes here we can see yt is a function of its likes of yt here we can see uh, it is basically a linear regression model alpha is actually a constant beta 1 beta 2 up to beta b the regression coefficient yt and yt minus 2 and up to yt minus b are our independent variable and this is our dependent variable we use the previous time steps that is yt minus 1 yt minus 2 and up to yt minus p these are the previous time steps by using this we try to predict the current time steps so it is basically actually a linear regression here we use independent variable of our previous time steps and try to predict the current time steps so let's the our um, let's execute our regression model for that we have to first of all uh, splitting our data set by using trend test split command before that we are going to uh, here we can see x is assigned as a first difference our df that is nothing but data set contain our uh, two columns that is passenger column and first difference we can see here this is our two columns passenger column and first difference column we assign x as a passenger uh, first difference column and assign y as a passenger column so let's execute our code here x is a, our first difference column values and y is our passenger column values after that we are going to split our data set into 70 percent and 30 percent 70 percent is training data set and 30 percent is testing data set by using train test split command so let's execute our code after that we uh, for linear regression we have our data should be in two dimension but our training uh, data contain only one uh, column that's why we only it is only in one dimension that's why we have to convert it into two dimension for that we have to reshape it uh, so i reshape it it between it between minus and plus minus one and plus one so let's execute our code after that we are going to apply our linear regression model on training x and training y data set so let's execute our code our uh, model is trained here now we are going to try to predict our test y value by using test x values so let's apply our model on testing of test x value uh, data let's see the regression coefficient of our model here you can see 0 0.189 is the regression coefficient of our model 
simple linear regression model and uh, let's see the intercept our intercept having value 277 it is quite big so let's ex, uh, let's see the uh, mean squared error square root of mean squared error of our result it is actually higher but this is the required procedure where we can see this is like basically a linear regression model we try to use previous time steps and try to predict the current time steps by using linear regression here we apply linear regression on our data our time series data after making it stationary first of all we make it stationary and after that we train it on our new data uh, our linear regression answer is uh, like this here we can see our linear regression coefficient is 0 0.89 Linear regression intercept is 277 and uh, means uh, square root of mean square error is 2, uh, 129. So let's see is it our model is uh, well fitted or not by using is it a graphical visualization of our original testing data and predicted test data. Here we can see the blue data blue line is nothing but our original test data and uh, our uh, this orange line is our predicted test data by our model this is our model predicted data that is nothing but this orange line and this blue line is our original data you can see from visualization our data quite uh, our model quite perform very well because it captures the trend somehow it captures this trend of our uh, original data our original time series so after that we are going to apply it using a uh, stat models library here we use uh, arima package to and try to see uh, the forecasted value and predicted value and try to see is it our uh, our uh, linear regression model gives as a correct uh, intercept or correct coefficients or not so let's see AR model consists of th three main terms that is nothing but order here we can see here we AR model by using library here we see AR uh, auto regression model by using ARIMA library here we import it from stat models dot time series analysis ARIMA model and here we apply it on passenger data here we use only one lag that is nothing but our P number of auto regressive terms are nothing but one here we only use lag as one that is nothing but only previous lag here we use there is no differencing term differencing term and number of uh, uh, moving average terms are zero because we are going to apply only auto regressive model that's why uh, moving average terms are zero as well as differencing terms are also zero degree of differencing is also zero so let's uh, execute our code here our model is executed here now let's see summary of our model this is the actual summary of our auto regressive model here we can see the constant value is 278 and our linear regression constant or intercept value is 277.32 it is quite similar and approximate and our co regression coefficient is 0 0.96 and our uh, linear regression coefficient here we can see is 0 0.89 it is somehow approximate our uh, model regression coefficient is 0 0.89 and after uh, seeing this uh, summary of our auto regressive model we can see our regression coefficient is 0 0.96 so it is somehow similar somehow approximate not similar but is somehow it is approximate so let's see the forecasted or predicted values forecasted values here we use steps are nothing but 300 that is nothing but our data set contain 100, 144 observation and we try to see our values up to 300 300 observations so let's see our output consists of uh, three arrays our first array is nothing but our forecasted value uh, 300 forecasted values and after that here we have another array here we can see the second array consists of standard error standard error of our uh, forecasted values and the third array consists of the 
confidence interval confidence interval of uh, the forecasted values so this is the output of the this forecast function arima uh, package consists of this forecast function which directly gives us a forecasted value the forecast and the output consists of forecasted value as well as uh, the standard error and the confidence interval so let's see the graphical visualization of our forecasted values here we can see this is our graphical visualization of our values so it is quite our graph is quite big so let's change it its dimension for that we have to do one thing so we have to just change its dimension by by changing this figure size let's make it 5 so you can see it is actually we get two graphs because displaying problem of our jupiter notebook let's see only for 100 observation uh, because our uh, data set contain 100 and 144 observation let's see for 200 observation here we can see this is our forecasted value so here we can see this is our model forecasted value this orange line is our original passenger data and the blue line is our forecasted data and this silver or uh, violet color is our nothing but our confidence interval of our forecasted values it is uh, due to it is of 95% confidence interval so this is our forecasting of our data this is forecasted value graphical visualization of our forecasted value and these are the nothing but the our forecasted value using arima model so this is the required procedure applying the model by heuristic way that is nothing but apply directly linear regression model and applying uh, the uh, auto regression model by using arima package by using arima package you use uh, you will get the result like this and you can directly get the forecasted value apply by using uh, forecast function here we use forecast function which gives directly the uh, forecasted value and here we you use plot dot plot underscore predict function to see forecasted value the visualization of our forecasted value these two function gives uh, it is actually quite simple we directly get our forecasted value by using uh, this plot predict uh, command as well as this forecasting function using this forecasting function so but in arima package you have to just uh, say that now ordering of that arima that is number value of p d and q p is nothing but number of auto regressive term this degree of differencing but in auto regressive term we try we just uh, see pacf graph and try to uh, give the number of auto regressive terms that is nothing but how many lags or how many previous uh, observation which are going to be used to predict the current ob uh, observation uh, so this is the required procedure for time series analysis by auto regression here we first of all by using uh, heuristic way or by using regression model we try to see the auto regression model here we can see we try to see it by using linear regression model after that we try to see it by using arima package this is the summary of our model by using arima package and try to forecast the values by using arima package arima package consists of the forecast function as well as the another function is that plot underscore predict which directly gives us a graphical visualization of our of our forecasted value so this is the required procedure of time series analysis by using auto regression model so thank you all of you please subscribe my channel and and hit the bell icon to get notification of my new videos and stay tuned i will try to make some better videos of time series as well as deep learning machine learning so if you want to see that please subscribe my channel and hit the bell icon to get notification of my new videos so i try i also try to make some small project or try to make some better project regarding machine learning deep learning and time series as well as another domain of uh, data science for so for that you have to just subscribe my channel and hit the bell icon to get notification of my new videos so thank you all of you